the American Association for Cancer Research hosted its annual meeting in Philadelphia this week, drawing cancer researchers and oncologists from all over the world. Regular Pulse contributor Carrie Grenz was there. She is an associate editor for The Scientist, and she joins us now to recap. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Mike. Carrie, what drew the biggest crowd? Sometimes that's an indicator of kind of what's hot at the moment. I mean, there are crowds everywhere. There were something close to 20,000 cancer researchers there, but definitely the clinical work. So the studies from human experiments, and some of them I heard were standing room only presenting some of the clinical data, especially about immunotherapy. Uh, This is a big topic. It's been a big one for the past few years, but now there are some therapies available to patients and more and more in clinical trials. In general, it's a simple concept. You get the patient's immune system to fight the cancer as if it were an infection. It's easier said than done. Sometimes these treatments are extremely toxic and few people will respond to it. So a lot of the discussions were about how we can tweak these therapies to make them less harmful to the patients, to get more people to respond to them and shrink their tumors. So it sounds like people are interested in stuff that's already available or almost available. What about the science behind it all, the research being done that eventually leads to new therapies? Yes, there was certainly a lot of preclinical data, which is uh, the data that, you know, evidence that comes out of the laboratories presented as well. One of my favorite talks uh, at the conference was about obesity in cancer. So uh, it's been known in humans that there is this very strong association between obesity and the risk of developing certain cancers. So the question has been whether losing weight can reduce this risk. And in, in one of the talks, this was a talk that focused on mouse research. The researchers made these obese mice and then had some of the mice lose weight, other mice stayed obese. Then they gave the animals cancer. And despite losing weight, the tumors grew just as well in the formerly obese mice as they did in the obese mice. And then they looked inside the animal's tumor cells and found that some of the molecular changes, the genetic changes that occurred in the obese mice were still there in the mice that had lost weight. You know, hopefully this is not indicative of what would be the case in humans, but this would suggest, at least in mice, that there are these cellular changes that go along with obesity that persist even when these animals lose weight. So the question then for on the human side is then how can we intervene and uh, mitigate these effects of obesity on cancer? Did you notice any big trends at the conference, any terms we should familiarize ourselves with? Some of it is not making it too far into the clinic right now, you know, such as microenvironment, tumor heterogeneity. You know, tumors are not just one kind of cell type, and it's just not one um, homogeneous environment, but there is a lot of diversity within it and trying to target those things and find out what tumors exactly are made of. Another technology that's emerging is uh, liquid biopsies. These would be blood tests or urine tests, other fluids that could give you an indication of the state of a cancer. Overall, it sounds like the tools we're using to fight cancer are becoming more and more refined at kind of an exponential pace. It is. I think a lot of this has to do with something that's called next generation sequencing, and that's a technique in trying to figure out the genetic code within tumors and healthy tissues. And it allows physicians to really try and personalize treatments, to try and find out what it is about that tumor that makes it unique to that person's disease and how you can then tailor treatments to it. A lot of it has to do with genetics. And so next generation sequencing has really contributed to that acceleration in cancer treatment. Carrie Grenz with a recap of the annual meeting of the American Association for Cancer Research. Carrie is an associate editor at The Scientist. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Megan.